As some of you may already know, I've been experimenting with different editing software, and right now I'm on to DaVinci Resolve. It's an incredibly powerful software, and there is good reason why people are so interested in it right now. First of all, it's free. There is a paid version, but the free version is pretty darn fully functioned. I've been using the free version for the last probably month and a half now. All of my videos have been done in it, and I haven't run into any roadblocks. And the other main reason is because of the amazing color grading tools that come with this software. But if you're coming from Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro and you go to color grade in DaVinci Resolve, there's one big question that I know you're gonna ask. What the heck are lift, gamma, and gain? So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at what lift, gamma, and gain are and why you might want to use them. Hopefully this should be quick and easy, but we'll see. Let's hop in. Okay, so let's say that this is the first time you've opened up DaVinci Resolve and you're looking at the color grading tab and you see you've got your clips here, you've got your nodes, which we're not gonna get into today, and then down on the bottom left here, you've got your color wheels. We've got lift, gamma, and gain, and you're like, I don't know what lift, gamma, and gain are. Now, if we click on this third dot here, you're gonna see shadow, mid-tone, and highlight, which might seem more familiar to you, but, we should probably know what all these things are so that we can use them. Now, the easiest way that I've found to explain lift, gamma, and gain is to give a quick explanation of curves. So we've got left to right, we've got zero to 100, let's call it that, and then bottom to top, we've got zero to 100 as well. Zero being full black, 100 being full white. Now the horizontal axis is our input. So what that means is whatever's in the picture at 0%, if I move this, it's going to affect those things. On the vertical axis, that's the output. So that's what I'm changing it to. So if I wanted to take anything that was fully black on my screen and I wanted to change it, I can move this point. So I'm gonna take my 0% and I'm gonna push it up. And you'll see that that fully black part that was on the left-hand side of the screen is now changing to a gray. I'm making it bright because I'm moving it up. And I can move it all the way up until we've got full white, which is a full line straight across the top. And the same thing can be done with the white point. So if I take my white point, I push it down, the white is going to become gray, and eventually it will become black. But you notice it doesn't just affect the right-hand side, it actually affects the whole line, right? So not only did 100% pure white move down, but also this point that would have been, let's say, at 25% is now closer to 10%. And you can also make points in the middle and drag them wherever you want. So right now, I'm not affecting the full white point and I'm not affecting the full black point. I'm just affecting everything around this point in the middle and I'm making a curve, hence, curves. And once again, you can see that this is fully reflected in our waveform over here. If we look at a full picture like this, the waveform looks a lot different. It doesn't have that straight line because it's not a simple grayscale. There's lots of bright parts and dark parts. And so then we're looking at that complicated image over here. But you'll notice that right up here, this is actually our windows and they're fairly blown out, but they're not all the way up at the top. So what I can do is grab my white point and I can drag it over until they're fully white. And it also brought up everything on the way. Okay, so hopefully some of that made sense. Curves are hard to explain. But now we're gonna take a look at our grayscale and we're going to affect the lift, gamma, and gain, and it's going to show us what it's doing in the waveform. Because we understand the curves, we can look at this and see what would be happening in the curves when we adjust lift, gamma, and gain. So if I increase lift, watch what happens. Looks pretty familiar, right? So lift is moving the black point up. I can achieve the exact same thing by moving this black point up on my curves. Exactly the same thing. Okay, let's try gain. We're gonna move gain up. Okay, so it's moving our white point over. It's making our bright parts brighter. If we move it down, it's making our bright points darker. So the gain is adjusting the white point. So I could adjust the exact same thing. This would be moving the gain up. This would be moving the gain down. And again, it's important to note that it's adjusting the entire line. Now, if we did gamma, let's adjust that upwards. See, it's making an arc. So it's pushing the middle section up with a slight emphasis on the lower side. 
right? And then if I move my gamma down, the arc goes the other way. Again, we're not adjusting the black or the white point. That's still pure black. This is still pure white. It's just making the arch in the middle. You can do the same thing by making a point on your curves and adjusting it like so. There we go. Or we could turn the gamma up. So if you've got curves, you can do what lift gamma and gain do. An offset is literally just going to move everything up or down. And this is easier shown with an actual picture. So watching the waveform, it literally just shifts the entire picture up or down. Now, how does that compare to what we're used to, which is shadows, midtones, and highlights? So we're gonna go over to our shadows, midtones, and highlights here, and we're gonna watch that waveform again. I'm gonna increase my shadows. Okay, so we can see that it made a bend, but it's not affecting the entire line. It's only affecting the lower parts. So our whites and our brighter parts here, our highlights are still fully intact. But what I've done is I've brought up only the dark parts. To compare that to our lift, if I bring up the lift, it brings up everything and leaves the white point. So we're pivoting on the white point to bring up the black points. Now our midtones, it makes a bump in the middle, but again, it's it's like it's anchored right here and right here, right? So we're not actually affecting the entire line. And then our highlights, same deal as with the shadows. It's like there's a pivot point somewhere near the middle here that's making this kind of curve, but we're not touching the bottom half of the line at all. Now, what can this do? Why would you want to use one over the other? Generally, the, what I've found so far is that lift, gamma, and gain are great for making your broad strokes adjustments. Let's say I just got this picture in and I want to make some tweaks to start with. The first thing that I would say is that if I wanted the whole thing to be brighter, let's say we didn't like the fact that it was like kind of dark and moody here. I wanted it to be a little bit more bright. Again, on the right hand side, you can see here that the waveform is not anywhere near close to clipping and yet we're definitely bright in those windows. So I can bring my gain up and that's gonna bring my white parts up. Again, this would be the same as if I grabbed this and brought the whole line closer to being more vertical. I'm gonna bring that gain up. And now our picture is a lot more bright. So we can see before and after. And then maybe I wanted to bring up the exposure in her skin tones. I can have my gamma and I can move that up a little bit. Now it's starting to look a little bit more washed out. I don't necessarily like this picture, but those are the kind of broad strokes that I can do. Now, if we take that and we copy it and apply it to our grayscale, so now you can see that I've made a bit of an arch and I've moved our white point over to the left. So you could do the same thing by using the curves. Now, what if we were to try and do that same thing using shadows, midtones, and highlights? So we're gonna flip over into what they call our log wheels, and I'm going to start to try and push my highlights up. The bright parts, the windows actually do get brighter. The skin tone is not touched. So I'm not making things brighter altogether. So in this case, I probably want to also move my midtones up to make the skin a little bit brighter. But you can see that it's starting to make some kind of weird things happen in the colors and there's like some banding and stuff going on. And so now we've got kind of this strange look in the skin. And so if we were to take that and copy it and apply it to our grayscale, you can see what it's done here. It looks like I've pushed my white tones over to the left, but that line isn't going straight from that point down to black. And then we've got this little hump in the midtones. And it doesn't really look good because our line is getting broken up into too many little pieces. If we want it to look better, we need to be more delicate with the line, and that's what lift, gamma, and gain are great for. So one more time, let's use our lift, gamma, and gain. I'm going to use my gain to push this up. I'm actually going to push my gamma down a little bit, and then we get a little bit more of a contrasty kind of curve. Last time I pushed it up, but I didn't really like that. So we've got before and after. So basically I added some contrast in there, and then if we copy that over to our grayscale, 
You can see what I'm doing. My white point moved over to the left and then we've got a slight curve in the line and that is our, our gamma there. Hopefully that made some sense. I know it can be a difficult thing to grasp onto. Believe me, it's even harder to try to explain, but I think that having the grayscale representation on the waveform makes it a little bit easier to comprehend. If you do have any questions or you need me to clarify something, hit me up down in the comments and on your way down there, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future reviews and tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.